Hello everyone. Welcome back to GMS Political Talk Show. Today I'm going to talk about what we need in our government to safeguard Singaporeans' interests in this country. I'll be reviewing all the processes, all the decisions made by the PAP leadership, the 4G leadership. And there have been three slogans, SG United, we must be res resilient, we must do this, we must do that, we must be united to fight this, uh, this virus, to contain it. But what is the fundamental problem that we have? There's only one problem. It all boils down to the weak and incompetent leadership of the PAP 4G leaders. Now, yesterday, Mr. Teo Chi Hin gave his speech. At this time round, he is different from the, from the Prime Minister, from Lawrence Rohr, right? He's, he didn't praise the 4G leadership for doing a good job, so-called. What he says, they have rise up to the crisis to manage it. And he, just, he tried very hard to justify why things are not as good as it is. As not as good as what we expected. The gold standard which they, they themselves set for, set it right from the beginning. He says that compared to the 1967 crisis, right, for the young, young voters, you may not know what happened in 1967, we face a big crisis because 20% of our economy depended on the British Army, navies that's stationed in Singapore, and they are going to pull out. And when they pull out, it will be a very good, very big challenge to Singapore economy, right? But this pandemic is even bigger than that. So he says that we have never seen such a big crisis before, bigger than SARS, bigger than the Lehman's brother, the financial crisis in 2008. So, subtly he tried to explain, or rather justify, the mediocre performance of his younger colleagues, led by Gam Kim Yong, right? Heng Sui Kit, Chan Chun Sing, Lawrence Wong, and Josephine Teo. He said, well, they have not done very well on the dormitory side, and he's imploded. He is admitting the mistake of Josephine Teo, that the dormitory wasn't managed well. And that's why we were spiked spike in the infection among the migrant workers. But Put that aside. We have paid top dollars for the supposedly most intelligent scholars in Singapore. For the PSC. They are from the civil servants. They are the top scholars. They are from the army, navies, air force. All are the SMS scholars, presidential scholars. Right? The paper generals. But why so? They still come out with a mediocre performance. And it's not that we do not have comparison. New Zealand don't need to pay their Prime Minister top dollars. They are managed well. Hong Kong have managed well. Taiwan has, has managed well. Macau has managed well. Why not Singapore? With the brightest, supposedly the brightest and most intelligent people. I've been thinking hard about this problem and I come to a one conclusion and it's quite scary. We as a nation and voters has given too much power to a small elite group who thought that they are the most intelligent people who can come up with policies right from their ivory towers without looking at things from the ground perspective, without analyzing 
issues in a more rounded manner. They thought they know best, but they did not. And it is the lack of diversity within this group of people, this group of elites, that cost us dearly. $100 billion of reserve. And it's not built by them. It's by us, our forefathers, who pay the land revenue for the HDB, the land sales accumulated in our reserve. Are you going to be fearful if another crisis comes out and they mismanage it and they have to throw another 100 billion or 200 billion reserve out of the reserve again? While the PAP leaders keep insisting that opposition come into power, we will raid the reserve. Now, who is raiding the reserve right now? Well, to a certain extent, I believe that we need to use the reserve to mitigate the economic fallout due to this pandemic. But never have I expected they have to go for the third budget, the fourth budget, which total almost $100 billion in deficit out of a reserve. It is pure incompetence. If they have listened to us, Many of us have been telling them the only way to deal with an uncertainty of a virus pandemic, a potential threat of a virus spread, is universal masking and social distancing right for the sun. They refuse to listen to us. They choose to listen to some theoretical expert. And their main purpose it's all calculated because they want to have an election early. They still even tell us to live our life normal. And now they are telling us we will have a new normal. Life will not be the same again. Now, so, all in all, I am putting forward right now. What Singapore needs is actually a government of national unity. A strong government of a united government that is formed not only by PAP alone. It must include diverse views from different opposition parties. I know a lot of voters still think that PAP is the best to run the country because no doubt they come from a system which selected the best and most intelligent people. But don't forget when they are making a lot of policies and directives, did they consult the stakeholders, the SMEs, the local SMEs bosses? No. They choose their same kind. High-level CEOs from big companies, MNCs also, instead of local bosses. And how are we going to take account or the impact of whatever they set up in directives will affect all these local businesses. This is a problem that we have right now. Similarly, if Parliament do not have a diverse views, policies will be pushed up at their imaginary pace instead of being debated, questioned, and thoroughly scrutinize before they take into all consideration of all the blind spot and come up with a sustainable and effective policies for the benefits of Singapore. So what we need is truly, really a united government with diverse views in Parliament. I hope when you go to Polling station in the very near future. Think about this. It is not only the PAP leaders that fail us, fail everyone in Singapore. It is a system which they have put up to maintain their monopoly of power that have failed the whole nation. And we need urgently a quick revenge 
of the whole system, starting by having more diverse opposition members of parliament. With that, I hope everyone will work towards that, digest it, and hopefully we as a nation can overcome these difficult times and prepare for the next crisis more effectively in a more sustainable way. Thank you.